In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in the abasement of your Son, have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestowed eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek, and riding on an ass, on a colt, on the fold of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will praise your name forever my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. 
The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give thanks to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Our dear Lord heard, as we, our dear Lord said, as we just heard, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. These are beautiful words that not only give us comfort, but also give us guidance for spiritual growth, for growth in holiness. The key word here is heart. Immediately, we think of the heart as that vital, main, life-sustaining organ in our human body. We also, though, use heart in many ways. For instance, we use it as a term of affection, like we refer to a sweetheart or a dear heart. Of course, the heart symbolizes love, like at Valentine's Day. Heart, though, also can be used for a magnanimous person, big-hearted, a person who's brave, brave brave-hearted. Or you think then of how a person who's sad, sorrowful, may be disheartened or heavy-hearted. So the word heart is such a beautiful, powerful word in our human language 
But then, too, in Jewish theology, the heart was the core of the person. For the Jews, the heart was almost like how we would use the term soul. So the heart was the core of the individual. This was the center of all emotion. Here, as we read in the Psalms, God speaks to us in the depths of our heart. God searches our heart. Through the prophets, God spoke and said, turn your hearts back to me. I will give you a new heart and replace your stony hearts with a new heart. So a very powerful image. This becomes even more powerful, the most powerful, when we think of the sacred heart of Jesus. This is a beautiful devotion in our Catholic Church. Jesus, true God, who became also true man in the mystery of the Incarnation, has a human heart. Moreover, that heart, the sacred heart of our Lord, symbolizes that perfect, infinite love of God that has been perfectly revealed in the humanity, the human love of Jesus. In the Gospel, we hear then of how Jesus in his heart was moved to compassion. So my brothers and sisters, we have this wonderful, beautiful teaching about the heart of our Lord. So our Lord then invites us and he says, come to me, all you who are labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So think of that, a yoke. A yoke was that wooden like collar that was custom made to fit two oxen. In the time of our Lord, two oxen were used to plow. So you had to have a special yoke made so that it would not hurt the oxen. So it was custom built so that there'd be no chafing or grinding or something like that. So our Lord makes this yoke for us. We then are joined to our Lord. Here's the idea that our heart is called to be united with his heart in love. To do that though, we then have to strive by God's grace for the same virtues. Jesus says, I'm meek and humble of heart. Humility, that humbleness, is really the key of all virtues because it counteracts that sinful pride, the key of all vices and sin. So the humility of heart, to be humble of heart is to recognize God is God and God loves us so much. He's given us life. He's given us everything. He's given us our life breath, our talents, our gifts. He's given us our loved ones. He's given us this creation. God has given us everything. While we have these gifts, we're mindful. They're, be to use, they're, use, they're to be used wisely to give glory to God, to benefit ourselves, to benefit those entrusted to our care. Also, even though we may be proud of various accomplishments, we always give thanks to the God who gave us those abilities. So here is a beautiful notion. So Jesus reminds us in the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit. That's the humility, being humble. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will live the kingdom of God. And then we think of our Blessed Mother, who said, I'm the maidservant of the Lord, and then later on said, my soul proclaims the greatness of God. That's humility. Then meekness is a virtue by which we have self-control. We do not give in to excess or defect, but we have that control over the things of this world, that control over our own passions. Just as humility is that key virtue, so meekness helps us then govern all those other passions that we have to deal with. So with that meekness then, we have the self-control that we need. Again, in the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. 
The earth won't control them, the things of this world. The meek will be able to control the things of this world. So with that disposition of a humble heart, that meek heart, we can be joined to our Lord in his yoke. And we rest with him. That's important, to take time to rest. This is what we're doing right now. We're with our Lord to spend time with him. Take time, though, for daily prayer. Punctuate that day to rest with our Lord through prayer. Begin the day with a little morning offering, asking our Lord to help you with whatever burden you may be facing, whatever challenge you may have during the day. Grace at meals, it's always that good time to give thanks. End of the day, good time to reflect back, to give thanks for the blessings, but also to express contrition for any failings too. But then spend like 15 minutes just allowing your heart to talk to the heart of Jesus. Heart speaking to heart, as Fulton Sheen said. Here, we can say our regular prayers, our different devotions, but just share our lives. Ask for the helps that we need. Pray for our loved ones. Spend 15 minutes in scripture reading or reading another spiritual book. How can we know our Lord if we don't spend that kind of time? It's by knowing someone that we can fall in love. And when we love someone, we want to know more. So take some good time to read. During summertime, when things may be a little bit slower, it's always a good time to not only reevaluate, but to have a better regimen of prayer. So that when everything begins again in the fall, we have that regimen that we follow. But with that then, we take time to remember that Jesus is with us, just like the two oxen. So we have the yoke, but Jesus is sharing it with us, and we plow ahead, mindful he's with us. So yes, we may be plowing through fields that are rather fertile, easy going, that's good, but we shouldn't get complacent, rather remember our Lord's with us, and always give thanks for the blessings. At times, though, plowing that field, we're going to hit tough soil, hard soil. We're going to hit a rock, and maybe it's going to throw our little plow off and shake us up, cause us to stop. We all go through tough times. We go through the times of sorrows, disappointments, failures, tragedies, injustices, all of us. But we remember our Lord's with us. We don't have to look back thinking, I'm out of here. No, we look next to us, we see our Lord, and he helps us to plow ahead. Plow through life to enter eventually the kingdom. So my brothers and sisters, a beautiful example of this is a St. Camillus de Lillis. Now St. Camillus was born in Italy to a very noble family, but because he was one of the other children, the lower children in rank, he decided he is going to become a mercenary soldier for excitement, one of the teenagers that wants excitement. So this is the latter part of the 1500s. So he enters the army, abandons any notion of God, faith, spiritual life. However, not only is he wounded, but he also becomes addicted to alcohol, becomes addicted to gambling, even once. He literally lost his shirt gambling, lost his clothes. But he took on the yoke of this world. He became a slave to sin. He hit rock bottom. Eventually he wakes up though, and he begins to turn back to the Lord. With the help of St. Philip Neri in Rome, he is able to put his life back together. Eventually he founds a community of brothers and priests who dedicate themselves to hospital work. But one day he was just so burdened, trying to just get through life, overwhelmed by all the obligations, all the burdens, the financial burdens, just the amount of need that there was. So he was in the church 
where they were home based, the Church of St. Mary Magdalene, above the tabernacle was a picture of the sacred heart of Jesus, Jesus holding his heart aflame with love. He prays, crying, and Jesus came alive. And Jesus says to him, holding that flaming heart, my faint-hearted son, do not be discouraged. Continue the work you have begun. You will succeed because it is my work and I will be with you. With that, a great relief, a great sense of the Lord's love filled his soul and he went back and he continued on. Again, a canonized saint, a person who'd take on the yoke of slavery of sin, but eventually took on the yoke of our Lord. So my brothers and sisters, a beautiful passage. Take to heart these words. At this mass, we lift up our hearts. You'll notice we have our sacred heart shrine. I've been pastor of three parishes. In each parish, I've always put in a sacred heart shrine because it's important to realize how much our Lord loves us. Growing up, still in my room at my mom's house, which is a sacred shrine today, I have a statue that my maternal great-grandparents brought over from Austria of the Sacred Heart. And the poor little nose is worn down from being kissed so much. But growing up with that image of the Sacred Heart, I knew the tremendous love of Jesus. Know that love. Teach your children that love. Visit the shrine. Light the candles. The little candles are for the little people especially. But know the love of Jesus. Because, as he said, my yoke is easy. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Buono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and homebound and for our deceased, especially Lucille Milkerrick, John Hui Nguyen Long, and Catherine Dutcher, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dr. Paul J. Dugan, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions held in the quiets of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name for our good, good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, St. Camillus, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
equipment. Our poor box collection is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School in South Dakota, located on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.